Hi there. In this screencast, we'll take a look at how we can use Projector to create a brand new project and then add items called activities to that project. So you'll notice that I created a list of all of the things that I wish to do while renovating a bathroom. So I'm going to add all of these activities eventually. For the purposes of this screencast, I'll probably just add the first three. But eventually I would add all of these activities to a brand new project. And I'll use the same project settings that we saw previously when I showed you how to create a brand new project. So I'm just going to move this list out of the way, but I'll refer be referring to this list throughout adding the activities to a brand new project. So I'm just going to move it out of the way so we can see the application. So you click on the projects gear here or here. That'll bring you to the projects window. I'm going to create a brand new project. And I'm going to call this bathroom renovation. The type, I'm always going to use time and materials so that I can record all of the materials of purchase, material, re material resources that is, as well as add all the work resources and record their time so I can figure out how long this project will take as well as how much it will cost. Again, we're always in the planning stages before we actually have someone do work. And I'm going to add a uh, color, maybe a nice pale pink. Maybe that's the color I'm going to paint the bathroom or something like that. And we can add a description about the project. I think it's fairly straightforward from what I showed you in my task list, but basically it would add all of the constraints, constraints as well as all of, the, all of the opportunities. And again, I'm going to start this next month. I only work Monday to Friday, by the way. So I'll start on the 6th. And I don't need to add anything else. I don't need to modify anything else. If you accidentally add or modify anything else here, sometimes it's best just to delete the project and start over again. So again, I've got the name, the type, and the start date. All I'm concerned with at this point will be adding all of the details as we work together. So now to add the, the project, I just click save, I click save. That adds the project to the project manager, manager, and we can have hundreds of projects. We can have hundreds of teams, hundreds of users, all using the same application. We don't need to create a new application every time we create projects. And we'll look at this project in more detail as we work. I'm done with the projects window. I'm going to start adding my activities. So again, all of these items are activities. Walls is an activity, but it's got sub-activities, new walls. And within that, in real life, you would actually have all of the details that are required to add new walls. So for example, you may, you may have to, um, <clears throat> for remove walls, you may be removing the drywalls, drywall, removing the studs, etc. For adding the new walls, you may be adding the new studs, repairing uh, the floors and the ceiling where you added those, stuff like that. There may be sub activities within these. I've just created a very general list of activities so it's easy to follow for those of you who are adding your own activities. So again I'm just going to move this out of the way and then add these activities via work activities. So I click on the little plus side beside work and uh, by the way there's a lot of different things and a lot of different items in this project manager. If you want to see all of the things we have control over you can use that little arrow I'm not going to look or give you an overview of every single tool or area of this application. I usually do that uh, in some of my other courses where we can't do so much with the application, but 
we can do so much with this application. I'm just going to um, show you these items on a case-by-case -case basis, and then you'll get an idea of what you'll need to do with a project management software. <clears throat> so again, I choose work. I click on the little plus sign next to work, and there's our activities. So I choose activities, and it brings me up, it brings me to a screen much like we saw in projects, but now we're looking at a list of activities. <clears throat> I don't have any activities yet, but to add the activities, we use the little plus sign. And I'm going to add the activities in the exact same order that I have in my list. You can add them in any order you like, but uh, sometimes it's difficult to rearrange them after the fact. And this is true with Microsoft Project as well as Projector. So I'll choose New. And my first activity, <clears throat> I will enter Remove Appliances. It's the very first thing I do when I start renovating a bathroom. And we can see what kind of uh, types there are. And task suits this one best, if you think, if you ask me. It allows me to choose a project. I had the bathroom renovation project selected back in projects, and I believe that's why it's selected here, but I may be wrong. I only have one project, so maybe that's why it's showing me that project. But make sure you choose the actual project you're working with. Now, I don't have any subtasks or uh, child tasks or parent tasks, but you'll see that we have a lot of different options for these tasks. Uh, don't change the status, whatever you do. Sometimes it's difficult to change that back. You can scroll through and see all of the options. Now, the duration, I imagine it's going to take me two days to remove all of the appliances. So I'm going to enter two here. And we'll look at what validated, planned, and real means later on. Planning, we always use as soon as possible. And that'll be related to what comes before this activity. So we'll see how that works. It's basically automatic. So that's how we add our first activity. I'll quickly add um, three more activities and then I'll add two more activities that have child activities and that should give us a good idea about how to add activities. So I'll choose save. Have an activity added. Notice I have this WS. This means work, breakdown, structure, code and we'll see how these populate as we work. They're automatic. And notice that we have a lot of different options here. This is basically all of the columns that we've chosen. These are the default columns that have been chosen for us, I should say, but we can choose more columns under this little option here, select columns to display. So if we don't need to see all of this stuff, we can, un we can turn it off. So I don't want to see closed yet. I don't want to see done yet. I don't want to see handled yet. Responsible, progress, status. Um, everything else is pretty useful for our purposes, so I'm going to choose OK. You'll notice we get a leaner uh, list item here now. Notice I have an ID of 8. <clears throat> this increments automatically based on how many activities we've added to this application. So I've had a project that I've added before, I added activities to it, I deleted those activities, this still increments. So don't worry about this number, it's beyond your control. We can't edit it, don't worry about editing. So I'm going to add a couple of um, more activities real quick. So I'll choose new. This one is uh, remove walls, again from my list. It's a task, and it's going to take a day. And I'll save. Notice it becomes 1.2. 
So one is the project. These are the sub activities. So it'll always be one until we move on to another project and then it may be two. You'll have to see once you have more than one project. I'll add another activity. This is remove ceiling. And again, it takes a day. That's all I'm changing is the duration. And finally, remove floor. today. Now this next uh, activity has sub activities. That is it has child tasks. So I'll create a new activity. This one is plumbing. The first thing I would handle with this bathroom renovation after I remove all of the old material is to add new plumbing. Now I expect that'll probably take me three days. I'm just guessing. And save. Now within this plumbing we also have a task adding the new plumbing. So I'm going to add another activity I'm going to call it new plumbing. Task. Now I'm going to make this new plumbing may take uh, two days. Now I want to make that a child plumbing. This activity belongs to plumbing, so that's its parent. So we just choose plumbing. The uh, application never forces you to choose anything, so you, it's easy to mess this up, so you have to think this through about what is a child of what parent. I've uh, been guilty of making that mistake quite a bit in the past, by the way. And I'll save. Now you can't really, you don't really get an idea looking at this list that this is a child of plumbing, but notice it's 1.5. They both have the same prefix there. This was 1.5.1. So that's how the WBS. Um, the, the reason that we're doing all of this is to generate something called a Gantt chart. So a Gantt chart is something that we use in project supervision vision a lot. It's almost as common as our diary, which we'll see. So if I click on this planning option, this will show me the Gantt chart as it exists now. So we have all of the items. Notice that I um, designated three days for plumbing. But look, if you look at the, uh, the amount of time it takes, it actually takes six days. And that's because of the calendar. So my calendar, I've taken Mondays off. I don't work Mondays, I don't like them. So with a four day work week, which is nice and civilized, it'll take six days, six calendar days to take care of the plumbing. And now we're looking at the Gantt chart. To get back to our activities, we can simply click on activities over here. We'll mostly be using, sorry, I shouldn't say mostly, but we'll be using this work menu item quite a bit, as well as the planning. So that's um, adding activities. Now, if you want to remove activities, you just go back to the same screen and I've realized that in order to create, add new plumbing, I have to remove the old plumbing. 
So I could just edit this and make it old plumbing. That's an option we have. I'll call that remove old plumbing. And maybe that's only going to take a day. And now I could add add new plumbing. So if you want to change the order of any of these items, the easiest way I find is to just rename the one that's out of order. And I'm going to add new plumbing. Add new. Let's call it new plumbing. Of course, we're going to add the new plumbing. That's self-explanatory. And let's say that takes two days. I'll save it. Now, notice I got a 1.6. This should be 1.5.2, and that's because I neglected to add the parent. So make sure you add your parent. Which is, in this case, plumbing. Make sure you add the correct parent. Now it gets the new WBS. So those things are dynamic to where these items uh, are listed as well as what their parent is. Now notice that we, remember we had entered three days for the duration of this. Those two items equal three days but let's see what happens if we take away that three days. And we'll take a look at the Gantt chart after we do that. I'm just going to remove that. Delete that. I hit delete on my keyboard to remove it and save. Now if we look at the Gantt chart, under planning, that's how we see the Gantt chart. Notice since we haven't linked these items. We'll look at that in lesson three. I'll have one item and then this one will follow it. It only takes two days because removing plumbing is happening at the same time as new plumbing, which is probably impossible. So that's adding activities, aka tasks in our situation. That's editing tasks. If you want to take a, if you want to remove these tasks, so again, remove old plumbing. Maybe that's not required. New plumbing is part of new plumbing. So we could go back to our activities, choose to remove old plumbing, and the little X will remove it. And now, if we look at our Gantt chart. Notice this has changed to it's WBS again, Work Breakdown Structure Code. That's what that stands for. Go back to planning. And now the whole thing takes two days. So that is creating a new project, adding activities, aka tasks, editing activities, removing activities, and then looking at the Gantt chart. In the next lesson, we'll look at linking these activities so we can tell how long all of this stuff will take. Thanks so much for watching.